Happy Friday, and we are continuing with an unforgettable I Will Testify series. Uh, and today we are going to hear the incredible transformation, uh, heart-wrenching but, but power, how Pastor Bosco, his testimony from the Rwandan genocide to finding Jesus. Uh, so make sure you stay to the end to hear about this story of transformation. Uh, real quick, uh, let me just encourage you, this month of February, we are doing hashtag I will testify. Share your testimony with us on social media. Tag us at CTMUSA and with the hashtag I will testify. Um, I'm going to get out the way. It, it, let me just say, if you haven't uh, seen any of our previous ones, go check it out in our previous videos on Facebook and on YouTube. Different testimonies, how the Lord has worked in our lives, brought us to him. And uh, the Lord bless you through that and encourage you as you see Jesus in your story. Uh, but let me bring in the man of the hour, Pastor Bosco. Welcome, sir. How are you doing today? Yes, Pastor Doug, I'm so delighted to be here today. It's always a joy to share the word of God. I'm doing all right. I don't know about you, about you, Pastor Doug, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing amazing. It's Friday. Uh, I'm excited. And I, I just want to um, uh, give the floor over to you to just give glory to Jesus and, and, and let us know your journey. There are many people who haven't heard your incredible uh, testimony and the book is coming soon. I know. Yeah. Um, and, and we'll let you know when that's out. I want my copy first, though. Um, but but we want to share, uh, want to ask you, and thank you for for sharing your testimony, all for the glory of God, um, and and how He's worked in your life. So I'm going to get off stage, and uh, and let let you share, uh, kind of part two. You mentioned last week uh, yeah. the the actual moment of salvation, and that was powerful. And if you missed it, please go back and check that out. Pastor Bosco's testimony of life change. Uh, but now let's go into kind of what led you to that point and uh, your journey uh, of faith. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Doug. It's always a joy. And I see all of you who are joining us online. My testimony, I indeed, I will testify what the Lord has done in my life. And uh, a few, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, for a number of you who are old enough, you know, in 1994, there was a uh, a genocide that took place in Rwanda. That is where I am born and uh, raised until I was a teenager. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, somebody say by the grace of God, if you are able to put in the chat for me, <laughs> by the grace of God, I survived the whole roller coaster that was very, uh, uh, it, it was very, I uh, can't even know how to describe it. It was unbelievable unbelievable that uh, you know uh, people people can actually behave in that manner now having said that i want to focus only on my story i'm not focusing on uh, any politics or anything just to focus on what god did and has done and is continued to do in my life and today is just a, a short one and a brief one like pastor daga said a more will be put in a book in which you can get very soon by the grace of god now god is god that's where i begin even when we do not know him he remains god as i mentioned in my testimony finding jesus the truth be told being born in a Christian family and raised in a Christian family does not translate automatically to you becoming a Christian or a follower of Jesus Christ or being born again. You have some knowledge about Christ, but you don't have to make a personal commitment to follow Jesus Christ, which I did, thankfully, at, during this event. I mean, after this event, I was still in the event of the genocide time that God find me, found me when I was hopeless, when I had no direction in life, when I was lost in the whole world. I was lost and I was in my own world and the Lord found me. Now, how did this happen? And I can tell you the truth. I am uh, all, I, an orphan now. I'm an orphan 
of uh, many years, over 25 years. And so this happened and it woke me up and actually it dis almost destroyed me in a sense that I am born as a third born in my family, a family of six siblings. And in this, among the six siblings, I'm the only surviving sibling. Now, this is a story that can disturb many of you, that can you know, disturb a lot of your emotions, but it is a, a time that also you appropriate the story. If you're going through, or you're going through some time that is difficult, I want to be an encouragement to you. I want to be very sensitive, even for those who are still going through painful moments in life. And so as a, 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 as, as a one who was born in number three in the family of six, uh, or with a parent, a dad and mom, all of us love uh, going to cry, going to church. That is uh, what we used to know. A time came in 1994 that uh, I had to separate with my parents and for circumstantial, it was circumstantial that we were separated because there was a lot of killing going on. And so in my, in my, in my real understanding at that age, it was obvious that as uh, my dad was looking for refuge, taking my young siblings to the next town to find a refuge, to find a place that was safe, that I was going to follow after him after a couple of days. Now, that never happened. I tried two or three times to try and join my dad where he was together with my mom. It never happened. And I tried all means, but it never happened. And it didn't happen because it was God's plan when I look back. If I was with them where they were, it means I would have died with them. So when the town, the time where they were, the town where they were, it, they were attacked and they were completely killed. All of them from my dad, my mom, my siblings. In the same, that period of the genocide, they were all wiped out. Now, it, it was difficult even for me to hear that. So I, 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 I I'm going forward, you know, fast, fast, fast forward. I had that information, that bad news. I did not believe, I did not uh, want to accept it. But first of all, I was still young to understand the concept of death. I know when you die, you don't see someone again, but I, I was not really fully understanding what does that mean? It was beyond my understanding. Now, I came to the knowledge of knowing that my parents were completely killed. My brother, as my young brothers, I was the older son, my older sisters and young sister, one or one of them, all of them were completely killed and were completely wiped out. It was something that I was not expecting in life. It's something that I cannot wish somebody to go through. And for a number of months, I was not able even to eat. I was just crying. Ah, I was just crying. If I ate, I would just eat it to survive. But I was just crying tears every morning. Oh, how can this be? That I'm not going to see my father. I'm not going to see my mother again. I'm not going to see my sisters again. I'm not going to see my in little life. Ah, it was difficult. It, it was beyond imagination. And I also contemplated also just dying. I wondered, what is this meaning of life? I could not see meaning of this life. I thought it is finished with me. So I was just counting maybe it's just a matter of time. Even me, I'm going to die and leave uh, this earth so that there's no meaning of life because the only my meaning of life was my parents. My meaning of life was my sibling. So what else do I live for? Now that was always, I, I was in like for three months it was very painful. It was very depressing. It was a hopeless situation. I don't even know how to describe it. But listen, this is where I found the truth that changed my life. If you go to my story, how I saved, received Jesus Christ, I, 
I was introduced to Christ in the right time. Right time, that is when I got to meet Christ. This it was very, very personal because when, if I did not know Christ at that time, I would have gone crazy. Let me tell you, I don't know about you, if you have gone through a situation that is beyond your mind, beyond your imagination, that you feel like you're going to run crazy. Now, this is what was going through in my life. I, I went to some form of trauma for a long time, but I tell you what, everything you see today, I want to testify and give glory to God that it is because of Christ Jesus. Listen, if you agree with me that even the life you have today is because of Christ Jesus, go in the chat with me and say, it is because of Christ that I'm still alive today. If that is your testimony, please go in because your testimony, you have a testimony. That's why this month we are saying, I will testify. You have a testimony. If you know that you're still alive because of Christ, please go in the chat and say, I am still alive because of Christ. Now, listen, giving you the story of my life. When I received Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, there is a promise that I was given in the scripture, and it is found in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Chapter 29, verse 11. Chapter 29, verse 11, and let me read it for some of you. You know it, of course. Some of you don't know it. It's going to be on the screen. But it says this, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans, for I know the thoughts, I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Another version says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to, uh, to, to the, the, I know the plans I have for you. And I think towards you. There are plans to give you peace and a hope and the future. Listen, that is another version which you can look and get. Now, but this is very personal in this sense that when I received Jesus Christ, I was introduced to one God who is loving because after going through all the genocide and all I went through, I was not seeing any love in this world. How can you tell me there is a love in this world after I have lost my father, my mother, in, in, a, in, 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 in a circumstance that are unexplainable. Now, I had to be reintroduced to the concept of love, which means all that I carried in my heart was hatred, was bitterness, was a form of uh, an imaginable, a, a tangible kind of uh, anger you can uh, you can't imagine. I was actually putting this way. I lived in darkness. So now here, the gospel is telling me, there is a God who loves me and he can care for me. Now remember, I was raised as a Christian, but I did not have this concept as a, at a personal level. And then the second thing, from the scripture I've been, I read for you, it is a God who has a plan for me. And remember, I'm in a situation where there is, I don't have hope, I don't have direction, I actually wish I would die, but there is a God who's saying, I have a plan for you, I have a thought for you, this is so personal. And then I was introduced to this God who says, even those of you who left your, your, your mother, you left your brothers, or you lost them, <laughs> I'm going to give you a hundredfold. I'm going to give you brothers. I'm going to give you sisters. I'm going to give you mothers. He doesn't say I'm going to give you fathers but <laughs> because he's our heavenly father. But I, he's, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. When I received Jesus Christ, that is when my life began again. Before I can't tell you, I can't even describe very well how it meant to be alone and orphan as a teenager. I thought life is finished. I was not seeing tomorrow. I was not seeing anything. But listen, there is a God I was introduced to and the same God I'm introducing you to if you have not had him. There's a God who loves you. He cares for you. 
He is so mad in love. He is mad in love with you. He wants to hug you. He wants to embrace you. He wants to have you all by himself. And that is a God I was introduced to. And then listen to this. He is the one who has sustained me since then. That's why I did not go crazy. Otherwise, I would have gone crazy. That's why I did not have to go through a long time of depression because he redeemed me. That's why I do not have to go through a long time of hopelessness. After that scripture and that promise, hope began to be restored in me. And I went to the church, a local church, that is where I was and where I saved Christ Jesus. And I got brothers who loved me, who loved me so much. And I began to realize, all right, they still love in this world. And I've got sisters who love me as their own brother. And I've got mothers who cared for me and they took care of me as my own mothers. Yes, I still have that void in me that I don't have my own immediate family, but God, in a way, he stepped in and began to fill the void. Now, that it was, to me, a miracle that I wish everybody would understand, that when you get saved, even if your mother and father leaves you, like David says in the Psalms, one of the Psalms, God is going to be your God. God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. That is a truth that changed my life. Finally, for today, and then we we'll continue this story in the course of the month. It was the journey, which I'm not going to finish today, the journey of dealing with the inside. What did I do with the anger? What did I do with the pain of loss, of losing a loved one? What did I do with this uh, thick darkness of all over me? What did I do with the, situ the, the, the situation of hopelessness? What did I do with this uh, uh, sense of uh, a loss of identity? I had a, a very low self-esteem. I mean, I, I didn't think much would come out of me. You know, what did I do with this issue of bitterness or this issue of unforgiveness? Now, you wait. Next week, I'll be dealing with that situation, all of them. But to today, all of you who is hearing me, I am here to share there is a God who gives hope. The situation you are going through or you have gone through or even the situation you go through in life, I want you to hold on on one promise. There is a God who gives hope. He can do everything to make sure you are restored. That's what he did. I did not know him. He found me and he cleansed me, cleaned me up gave me a new beginning, gave me a new, a new mind, gave me a new heart. And the process is what we're going to be talking with you next week. I will testify of the goodness of the Lord. Let me stop there for today. And I know that you may have a testimony that the Lord has been good to you. He has restored you with hope. Which situation? Did God handle in your life? Can you go in the chat there and leave it a comment? Because someone needs to be encouraged. I want to encourage you. Share your testimony. That is how you are glorifying the name of God. That's how you're showing the power of God that is at work in your life. For today, that's it. We're going to see you next week as we testify even more and say, how did I deal with all these issues that were going in my heart? And God bless you. Pastor Doug. What did you hear today, man? Amen. Amen. My goodness. What a powerful, powerful testimony. And, and we have some people who are saying the same. Betsy says, oh, my very touching testimony. God bless you, Reverend Jean Bosco. Josephine uh, says, I bless God for you, Reverend Jean Bosco. You're a blessing to us. And to that, I say yes and amen. Thank you for sharing. Uh, there's more that's going to be shared. So make sure you come back with us next week. Um, but thank you for sharing what the Lord has done in your life. This is, this is so powerful. And uh, this is part of what the Lord means when he says that we, as followers of Jesus, the children of God, overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So thank you so much for that. Um, in closing, my, my job is just to uh, invite you, let you know what's happening this weekend. And... 
invite you this Sunday at 11. This Sunday at 11. You hear my kids upstairs. They're excited for Sunday at 11 too. Uh, but this Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, please join us for a powerful word. Pastor Bosco is going to be bringing the word uh, about radiating God's glory in prayer. So please join us. If there's a time zone difference, mark your calendar, but we invite you there. We invite you to partner with us at uh, c10us.com slash give. If, you, uh, if this ministry has been a blessing to you or if you want to be part of the vision, Vision 300, which is revival in America, 300 church homes praying for revival daily, preaching the gospel at least weekly, and investing financially into this ministry to see revival in the United States. If this is speaking to you, if God, if you believe God is calling you to be one of the 300, register at www.ctamus.com. Finally, if you haven't had a chance to do so, please follow us and subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you see our handles at CTAM USA, a website there. We can get connected and uh, let hopefully be a blessing to you and your family and your life. Uh, so we love you. And lastly, tonight, tonight there's a prayer service. You see it right here at 7.30 tonight. And we are going over spiritual warfare, the armor and weapons of the Christian. So please join us then. Uh, we love you. We look forward to seeing you Sunday at 11. And remember, no matter what the situation, what the challenge, whatever the question, know that Christ is the answer.